Hey everyone, it's Matt here. How's it going everybody? This is your friend Will. Hope everything's going great with you. And today we're going to go through a very interesting topic and that is, do you need to be technical in order to be a tech founder? Before we continue, I'd just like to say, if you are a tech founder or if you are a thought leader within the tech industry, you should consider subscribing to this YouTube channel because we will always be discussing some of the hottest, newest things happening within the tech industry. Welcome back to another episode of Tech Kingpins. So you're sitting on your couch one day watching the news and they're discussing the latest developments in artificial intelligence technology. And bam, you have an idea for a product. An interesting way it can be used to solve a problem. But then you realize that you know nothing about coding. So you can't actually build it. Well, that's the mistake that you might make. The truth is that doesn't have to stop you. Now, eventually you will need to be able to communicate about the technology, but that's not quite necessary yet. Right. There's tons of founders who are not exactly hands-on technical, who know nothing about programming. And yet they built trillion dollar enterprise that impacts in the entire globe. For instance, Steve Jobs, um, Jeff Bezos or Jack Ma, they all came from a background of finance, business, or design, right? None of them really came from a programming background. So in the beginning, the general idea and the general direction, which is your vision, is sometimes more critically important than knowing about programming. Now, if you have some experience regards to one of the aspects related to developing the core product in the beginning. That may actually help you a lot in the beginning. And we're gonna go over that next. If you have your idea, the first step is simply to be able to scope out the specifics of what you want. And you can simply freelance or outsource the development for a very simple minimal viable product. Just to test and see if the market is interested. The bottom line is you don't necessarily need to know how to code. For example, Evan Spiegel, the founder of Snapchat, is more of a product guy, more of a design kind of person, right? So when he designed the prototype, uh, and it, it was really amazing to you know, have those, something that nobody has thought of. Uh, and he, and you know, to be able to have the foresight and the intuition of whether or not the product is able to succeed before actually building it with code, uh, that's going to shave off a lot of time, right? Uh, to kind of know that what's the right direction, uh, especially when you're dealing with a 2C product, you're dealing with the consumers directly. And uh, I mean, nowadays, it's, products are very user-centric. Uh, you know, apps are fighting, literally fighting, to get to the end user, right? To, to make sure that the user uses it. So. Um, even if you're not a developer per se, say if you're a designer or, or a market research analyst, you can still use your expertise and leverage that against the problem that you're trying to solve or the market that you're trying to target. And ultimately these aspects can help you develop the first prototype or the first phase of the solution. Once you see there is potential for traction, then you'll want to find a technical partner or co-founder to help you in developing and leading the development of the project. And if you're getting to this stage, we actually made a video for you on how you can help, how you can find the perfect co-founder. This, and this will help you as you continue to grow and expand into further generations of your product. Yeah, eventually, after a while, you're going to have a solid foundation of technical team if you're actually developing a technical product. That is unavoidable. It's going to happen sooner or later. Uh, but when you feel like the time is right for you to actually build a technical team, it is very important to find the right co-founder that is both competent and also uh, someone you can trust. Uh, and once you build that internal technical competency, then there's product iteration. And after that, the process and the procedure will be much more uh, rigorous and standardized. But in the beginning, it is totally okay to be a little bit, I guess, 
chaotic because you're still trying to find the product market fit. You're still trying to navigate in the market. And when starting a tech startup without a tech background, the key thing that you, the key thing is you need to understand your industry more so than the technology at the beginning so that you know the product will fit into the market practically. And as time, and as time goes on, you will need to be able to, and as time goes on, you will need to be able to eventually understand the technology enough to be able to communicate with your tech team, just so you can take part in the decision-making process in every step of your business. Yeah, as Matthew mentioned earlier, if you don't know about technology, you have to know about your industry. And sometimes that's even more important because knowing the market will allow you to cater the technology to fit the market needs better. But that doesn't really mean that you should not consider learning about technology, right? Because understanding how, to pro how programming works in the state of art uh, limitation of software development or artificial intelligence or other type of emerging technologies um, they can really help you understand what you can and cannot do with the current technology. What is a realistic expectation uh, in terms of product development in the next three, five, ten years? And how do you allocate funding or your resources for research and development as opposed to uh, enhancing your existing product? Right? So, the key thing here is just that just because you're not a technical founder yet does not stop you or prevent you from continuously learn about programming as well as uh, software development once you actually start your own startup. So there you have it. These are the beginning steps to becoming a successful tech founder without having a technical background. Do you have a brilliant idea for a product even though you're not really a tech person? Feel free to let us know in the comments down below so that we can take your idea. Don't forget to hit this like video and subscribe for more content. Otherwise, stay safe and uh, hopefully see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.